Episode 6 did not disappoint as we see Will reeling from the fallout of Trey and him losing their friendship in the last episode and Trey going back home to talk sh Aunt Viv trying to make sure that this charity event in honor of her late friend and Lisa's mom goes off without a hitch and Uncle Phil realizes that your friends sometimes ain't really your friends. What's good y'all? She gets this Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Bel Air video. In this video we are doing a breakdown for episode 6. I can't cannot wait to talk about this explosive episode. Well, while it wasn't like explosive, explosive, it was definitely giving secrets and drama and a little bit of love because Will and Lisa, what? Reconnected. Carlton who? If you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, turn on your bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of my Bel Air content. Y'all, I am utterly obsessed with this show. I cannot stop talking about it literally in my life. This is the only thing that I'm talking about and people are probably over me, but y'all gonna deal until 31st when we get the finale. And I'm so glad I have Eric Van TV and you lovely subbies to continue the conversation with. So let's go ahead and get into it. The episode opens up with a very, very angry Will and it's understandable. Him and Trey are no longer friends and he's also starting to get a ton of social media backlash behind Trey going back home and talking sh about him is definitely something hard to deal with and because he is emotionally struggling he lashes out a little bit breaks something and it calls for him and Uncle Phil to have a conversation in his office and I really enjoyed this endearing moment thank God Carlton wasn't there to see it because he would have definitely been more pissed than he currently is we're literally seeing Uncle Phil and Will's relationship get closer and closer and closer and it's beautiful to see Uncle Phil create a safe space for Will to be vulnerable and honest and feel his feelings while also being able to be accountable to his feelings accountable to the things that he do while he's feeling those feelings and then able to turn it around and just be the man that he is looking for himself to be i loved it so pretty much will kind of snaps out of it to support aunt viv as well as lisa as they prep for this charity event they're putting on a lupus charity event in honor of lisa's mom who passed a few years before and this is a very very tough time for both lisa as well as aunt Viv. Lisa's mom was on Viv's best friend and apparently Lisa's mom's dad, the lovely police chief clown, he has actually moved on and already gotten another woman pregnant. Meanwhile, her mom has no, has been dead for maybe less than two years. Lisa hates the new woman and so do I. She's giving Karen vibes all up and through this whole entire event. This woman goes full on Karen while they're in conversation and talking about Lisa's mom and having a little moment of nostalgia, sentimental. Oh, the baby Baby kick. They always do that. Let's make a big note about that. Rolling up on on Viv asking can she speak at this event as if she was actually cool with Lisa's mama and has anything to say about this woman. She just wants to find out and, or find and carve a space for her to feel seen so that she doesn't feel like the evil stepmama because it's all about how she feels. She's completely neglectful and oblivious to the fact that one, Lisa don't like her and two, she definitely don't like her pushing in all of these overly ridiculous advances. When on Viv tells her that she can't not actually give a speech then after Lisa does her poem she says okay well at least I want to do a toast and my man said I could do it well guess what your man don't own this house your man didn't put on this event you want to give a toast and go to your man's house you and your man boo boo it's on Viv gathering her and telling her that she can escort her out if she would like for me and it gave Lisa all of the validation and support that she needed in her feelings around this woman who seems to be coming into her life pushing her mother and all of her mother's things out of it as if her mother was a non factor when in fact Karen you are the non-factor and this little bibbity bobbity boop of a black man that seems to not even be able to get it or is paying attention to his daughter and his feelings you two are the non-factors shout out to the banks because y'all holding Lisa down and I love that for her and though Will is trying to honor the whole old deal or the blackmailing that Carlson put in place in the last episode and is avoiding Lisa by the end he ultimately comes around and realizes that he needs to show up for her he needs to support for her I just knew that he was going to reveal to her that he that Carlton is the reason why he been keeping his damn distance but he didn't so okay cool Will in some way manages to pull himself up get out of his emotions and really show up for everybody around him he shows up for Lisa and just is so endearing and connecting with her about how they feel about not having their parents around while her mom has passed his father left but the feelings are very much so similar in reference to the longing this is definitely a connective 
tissue thing for them that is helping fuel their chemistry. And whether Will likes it or not, he can't stay away from this girl because he is definitely already head over heels for her. He also winds up showing up for Carlton who overhears Lisa and Will's conversation in the courtyard and how Lisa, oh my God, so poetically communicated how she realizes that Carlton is using her vulnerability as a way to get in and stay in with her. And it's so hard for her to be able to manage navigating and doing gymnastics around his feelings while also still trying to take care of herself and process her own feelings. You better advocate for yourself, sis. You better tell these people how it is and how it ain't. I wish I had the words at her age to really be able to be so much so in tune with how I feel and what I think to be able to communicate that and do so in such a beautiful way. And when she does, this is how Will is able to more deeply connect with her and let her know like, yo, I'll be here for you to unload or unpack or whatever you got to do. And he ultimately circles back to that by the end of the episode when she asks like, yo, why have you been keeping such a, such a distance? And he doesn't reveal the real reason why, but he lets her know like, yeah, I don't want to be one of the people also bringing more drama to your life because clearly you already have that with what's going on. And I would want to just be a force of light and lifting versus bringing anything on to you. And she's like, well, if that means I can't have you, then I don't want that. And he's like, well, I don't want that either. And it's the kiss for me. Shout out to the subbies who reminded me last. I did a preview video for this and I said that this was going to be their first kiss that we got the preview of in the trailer, but they did kiss in the first episode. I totally forgot about it. I think I was traumatized by Carlton trying to kill Will behind them kissing for the first time. But this kiss is an uninterrupted kiss. It's a sensual kiss. It's a, okay, we finna go somewhere type of kiss. And I'm absolutely here for it. Now going back to Will showing up for Carlton. <sighs> Shout out to Will for giving Carlton all the grace as he is coked out in his bedroom, losing it because Lisa don't want his behind. Cause it wouldn't have been me. Carlton is given menace, he's given scum. And the fact that Will was able to cultivate any type of grace and patience for him and support him in this in this moment where he is literally unhinged. I'm like, all right, sir, you you onto something. You, you really is a, a really good guy. Carlton has some really, really deep feelings around Lisa. And while I understand it, he he also needs to learn that he can't control people or manipulate people into loving him. And I think that this is going to continue to be an underlying problem for him and Will in their relationship, no matter how much Will shows up for him, because what Carlton lacks innately, like what Carlton doesn't have naturally, Will possesses in abundance. Do y'all see how Will navigated that event he's going through and speaking to people and cheering people up and making people laugh and jumping into conversations? He's the social butterfly and a phenom at it. And it's almost like poetry watching him navigate and move in and out of these circles with these people and allow for people to feel comfortable and seen and enjoyed while he's with their company. Meanwhile, when Carlton interacts with people on most occasions, people are looking at him with confusion because it's awkward. It's weird. He's pompous. It's too much. So whether or not Carlson can get past the idea of Lisa being completely into Will, whether or not Carlson can forgive Will for cultivating this beautiful relationship with his father and Uncle Phil, I definitely think that Carlson will not be able to get past the fact that Will is who he wants to be socially and it's going to drive ridiculous rage and jealousy for him. Today was just another foreshadowing for that. But I am glad that while unhinged and while utterly ridiculous, Carlson had a redeeming moment where he was able to connect with will let his guard down really release with some of his emotions and kind of sit in the fact that he know he was wrong and he needs to do better now if only uncle phil could have picked up on that while your little speech about he need to give himself grace is all cute and all but i'm gonna need y'all to see carlton for who he actually is versus who you think he is because your son needs help phil yes he's anxious but he also needs a ton of help he ain't coping well he is not okay man what going to one of my favorite parts of the episode mr michael ely michael elian Aunt Viv finds him in her creative study or studio and he is just staring into her painting because what he told the last episode he could just stare and get lost in her work for hours you thought he was lying you thought he was joking because he wasn't look at him right here and Aunt Viv gets a little bit discombobulated with the intensity of their conversation and his looks and sis I get it listen I am not an advocate for infidelity and cheating I'm not an advocate for it I, I'm not I 
I, I have a problem with it 110%. However, God is still working on me and Michael Ely in this show as Reed, I'm just saying, Aunt Viv might gotta taste the fruit, y'all. She might just gotta do it. And I'm perfectly fine with y'all ripping me to shreds in the comment section. Go ahead and tell me how toxic and trash I am. Go ahead right now, go ahead. You could do it because you ain't lying, okay? You not lying. The way I'm sitting here watching this man frolic across this screen, make Vivian feel seen and heard in a way that he is because he actually sees her more than as Philip's wife or these kids' mother, but as a beautiful artist with immense talent that is just waiting to burst out and be appreciated. My God. I wish that for all of us. I ain't even gonna hold you, y'all. I wish that for all of us. And he is definitely gonna be a problem, which Phil picks up on immediately as he's passing through the hallway and he looks in and sees Viv and him staring locked eyes. What's going on here? Oh, nothing. This is Reed, an art gallerist, owner, investor, lover, who, you know, is pushing me to get back out there with my art. It's so funny because when you see in the episode how Phil describes her art, oh, it's great, versus the intensity and the adjectives that Reed uses to describe her art. It's like, Phil, you are completely in over your head, and I'm going to need you to pick up some kind of art appreciation book, so an audio book, a YouTube video, or something, because you finna lose your wife. You finna lose your wife because you don't see one of the most important pieces of her that she actually needs right now and she's kind of spiraling without. Ultimately Uncle Phil feels a little bit of the competition and feels his little inadequacy as he stands up next to Reed in these creative conversations and he puts down a $20,000 bid for Viv's painting so that he can win it so that he doesn't let Reed win it and ultimately I mean Viv wins because she also made a bet with Reed that if her painting sold for more than $15,000 that she would put her art up in his art gallery on exhibit and stop waiting as if she's not ready. So everybody won, I guess. Uncle Phil, keep your head on the swivel and find you an art book, bro, because you better get the appreciating. Ashley has a big letdown in this episode when she goes to kind of like feel out the little girl that she's feeling and come to find out that little girl is feeling Will. Now, it's not necessarily clear on which way this could go. We definitely get them, you know, she sent them home because she feels uncomfortable. She didn't feel like she was going to be able to handle being able to still hang out with them the rest of the night after she figures this out. I'm just hoping that Ashley doesn't use this as a way to resent Will, which again, it's not clear of how she's feeling in reference to Will being the person that this girl likes, but I guess we're gonna see that in future episodes. I'm really just kind of like looking at it like, all right, Carlton is against Will, Hillary is for Will, Ashley is for the most part for Will. However, this could be one of the things that sends her little teenage hormonal brain spiraling and make her like, yeah, Will try to steal my girl. I think that she's way more sensible than that, but we are watching a television show. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. Now, Uncle Phil realizes that the little chief of police ain't his homie. He is actually going to be running against him for DA now that Uncle Phil is having a conversation of defund the police. And he has the audacity to prance around here with his white woman, this Karen, who utterly is ridiculous within their family and who he actually cheated on his wife with before she passed away with lupus. Can you be more ratchet? Could you? Could you be more trash, sir? Golly. Only thing that would be worse is if you had an illegitimate baby pop out. But I guess we're gonna figure it out as you go down this campaign trail. And I guess it's also good that Miss Karen ran her mouth a little bit too much when we found out about the infidelity, because guess what? That might need to be used when it comes down to y'all going back and forth with this damn election. How about that? But y'all, that is my full breakdown of episode six of Bel Air. I am going to be going live tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is on March 3rd at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to further discuss the episode live with y'all. And I cannot wait to do so. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and turn about notifications if you're returning welcome back and thank you so much for continuing to watch my videos i hope that you're enjoying the content and i'm jumping down in the comment section right now to see what your thoughts theories and predictions are for the rest of this phenomenal series did i tell y'all i was obsessed <laughs> i'm gonna see you in the next one bye